Hey guys, we didn't forget about you all night. We only forgot about you during the time we were actually supposed to do our live show. So, Bobby and I, oh my goodness, you can you can hear our neighbors through the wall. We, we haven't been sleeping well mm. because we've got neighbors on both sides that are up until all hours of the night. It's been intense. But I wanted to show you something really fun. Bobby and I went to the local spinning guild and as part of the membership fee, oh my gosh, they're so noisy. As part of the membership fee, they handed out what's called a silk hanky or a silk hank. And these are what they look like. This one, I think, is the, the native silk. And when you separate these, each one of these is from one cocoon of a silkworm. Hey, Grandpa Jones, how are you? So this is silk. This is silk that has not been processed except to be, ah, I need lotion, except to be boiled. And then the cocoon is stretched over a frame. And that's why it's in the shape that it is, is because this is the shape. This is the shape of the frame. And there's multiple uh, cocoons on each, um, on each one of these. So this one has been dyed. It's very, very pretty. And it's always best, one thing we learned is it's always best to uh, have a lot of uh, lotion on. So I'm gonna get some lotion because otherwise I'm gonna be stripping all of that off with my gnarly fingers. A little bit of lotion goes a long way. You don't need a ton, because you don't want it to be clogging up your work, but you do want enough that you're not prickly. So, there yeah, we go. Is, it's so itchy. What is? The silk. What oh, oh, so I have to tell you something that's super exciting about this. If you get the silk that has been processed into roving, I hate to touch it. It's dry, it's scratchy and I hate, I hate the feeling of it on my hands. This, this natural stuff is not the least bit scratchy. It is very, the, and working it is very, very similar to a really long wool because the fibers are exceptionally long. And so if you get the ones that haven't been turned into, into roving, they haven't been super processed, they are very similar to spinning with, um, I don't, if you've ever ha used Angora, rabbit wool. If you took Angora rabbit wool and mixed it with, and it had the characteristics of both a long wool sheep and the silkiness of an Angora rabbit, it would be very similar to working with this raw silk. And the different silks are from, at least from what I remember and what I understood, the different silks are from different types of worms. So this really white stuff is from Bombex mori, which is a cultivated silkworm. And this darker one, if I'm remembering it right, this darker one is from a native silkworm. And, the, and there are native silkworms here in Oklahoma that will actually eat the mulberry bushes and um, their color is darker and um, it's just kind of different. So I'm going to take off one of these hanks and show you how to spin it because it was super exciting. I had no idea how simple it was. And I had no idea how fun it was to, to use. So this is, this is, I mean, you see how many layers this has in it. It's amazing. And the other thing that impressed me was that when you use this, that is the raw, um, it feels very similar to cotton in its texture when it's finished and it, its sheen. Anyway, look at that, isn't that something? Apparently the cocoon base was around here where you see kind of that blot in the middle. And if you see multiples of that in your uh, hank, it means you accidentally grabbed two cocoons. Isn't that something? That's, That's something. from a worm. They eat mulberry leaves. One of the things I would really like to plant on our new property, if and when we ever get it, mulberry. is I would like to plant mulberries because you can eat the fruit. It's like a, a, a very long raspberry or blackberry. It's kind of what it looks like. 
and then the leaves can go to to feed silkworms and you can order silkworms online you can get silkworm chow if you don't have mulberry trees but from a permaculture and a and a prepper point of view i think it's really fun to be able to grow your own food for them cost you nothing extra to do that plus you get the delightful uh, fruit mandolin says it looks like batting for quilts it does doesn't it so if you guys i had shared a while back a video from an asian channel and she shows a lot of the traditional ways of living and farming in china and if i haven't shared it to you it's on my facebook if you want to go look on my facebook it would have been from a couple weeks ago so maybe i need to reshare it but she her family's living is made with these silkworms and um, they make a quilt just using this. They put layer upon layer upon layer and they stretch these to the size of a queen size, this, to the size of a queen size bed spread. And they will stretch that far. Um, and um, they used it as the batting inside the quilt and I, they used either a finished silk sheet on either side or they used cotton i'm not sure which but it was delightful to watch it was absolutely stunning cinematography and it totally made me look at textiles differently sometimes we have these preconceived notions about how difficult it is to produce something and whether or not it's within our realm of capability and then you find something like this and it just absolutely shows how beautiful nature is and how complete um, the circle can be closed and it just amazes me how many creatures there are in the world that you can have some kind of symbi symbiotic relationship with it just, oh, John, you're gonna start seeing yes probably movie. sorry okay. no, so I'm trying to get this edge pulled out just a little bit because when I start to draft if I have this thicker spot on the side, that's not going to draft very well. So I kind of want to do some pre-drafting and open that up. Can I help? <laughs> Chitan Mound says, just don't plant them close to your house. Birds love the berries and will poop on your car. Yeah. The colors of the berries make the bird poop really <laughs> nad on your car to wash off. Really hard on your car to wash off. That's what I've heard. And generally, at this point on this property, for those of you who saw the video from yesterday, it, the, the property that we're wanting, that we, we actually have money down on, it's a blank canvas. And a lot of the things that I was a little bit worried about, um, just because of stories people have told me, and some things that have happened to us here, a lot of the things that I was concerned about in being in this new space, um, this property will allow me to start with a blank canvas and it looks kind of blah right now because they put in a few trees but no big trees the landscaping is very simple and very basic it's a lot of lawn it's a lot of lawn and some pasture most of it is lawn the the pasture that you saw on the side wasn't even quite half of the property so um and it's not fenced for goats so uh, there will, the nice thing and, and the reason, one of the reasons we're excited about it is that it allows us to watch the property and add things as we have the time, the energy, and the money rather than having a lot to keep maintained. As long as we have some way to mow the grass, we will be, um, we'll kind of be able to pick and choose what we start with and watch the property a little bit. Did you want to show them your bobbin of spun silk? Um, yes, this one, this one is actually mostly bamboo. So that's bamboo thread. Oh, the other thing is here in Oklahoma, you can grow bamboo. And they have it across the street over at the gathering place. And I've seen a couple gardens around here that have bamboo and they use it a lot of times as a windbreak for their garden. And so the place that I would like to plant bamboo would be um, on the windward side of the garden a little bit distant so that, um, because there's quite a bit of wind up there. We feel quite at home there, and I think a lot of it has to do with the wind. It is as windy as Idaho. 
but I feel like it kind of cleans the air a little bit. Now the way that they showed us, you guys could probably see because it was hard to keep the drone out of the shrubs. So. Oh, because of the wind? Yeah. So Mandy Lynn wants to know, how would you keep bamboo from taking over? That is one of my questions, too. They do, as far as I understand, spread, spread with root rhizomes. They're a type of grass, is what bamboo is, if I remember correctly. And um, I know that if it has any kind of growth habit that is similar to willows, that you can make a difference in whether or not you water it during the hot summer months and um, just running a lawnmower over things if you have new start new shoots that come up that you don't want but I do know that there is bamboo that's edible that is the new shoots come up they are edible and I don't know but what you couldn't feed them to some livestock but you can also feed it to your family if you've ever gone to a Chinese restaurant they do have bamboo shoots and I'm right now having conversations with a company that I have always really admired to see if we can affiliate with them and share their products with you um, as a way for our channel to continue to have income as I plant the new garden and the new orchards. And um, Okay, so the thing with this is that you have to have a really, really, really long draft because these fibers are really, really long. And I did this backwards. So with this one, I'm already losing my lessons that I learned over at the library. So this is quite a bit too, too much. So I, I let that go before making sure that I, it, it is kind of important with silk that you pre-draft because those fibers are so long and if you don't, if you get too close and you get any twist into it, you will not be able to unbind it without tearing it and without pulling on your hands. So the best thing to do is to pre-draft extensively down to exactly the amount of fiber that you want. So that's what I'm doing. And let's see if I can find my card that I had finished. So we're talking about bamboo. Um, Mandolin says, can you say fencing? So. Uh, from bamboo? Yes. Yes, you can make all sorts of things from bamboo, but you need a per certain type of bamboo to make certain things. Just like anything else, each of the bamboos has different characteristics. And if you want it to be certain um, strength or grow to a certain size, you need a certain kind of bamboo. And again, this Asian channel that I'm watching. Can you guys hear our neighbors? Can I say how excited I was? Do you want me to go over and ask? No. No, honey. We should, Mom. No. You're not going to stop if we don't. Honey, they're not going to stop because we do. So they're, they're single people. And so they're kind of into the party lifestyle is all we can figure. Um, what was I saying about um, was I talking about oh so this Asian I don't know the name of the channel in English because she does have her channel name in Chinese figures and sometimes she has subtitles and sometimes she doesn't but most of what she does is just imagery so it doesn't matter so you can see this card I'm gonna park this really quick knees work really well to hold your yarn so I have pre-drafted this and put it onto a card, and that is, in my opinion, a very good idea. But it doesn't look like it's very much, but it's a lot. And so I'm gonna spin what's on the card, and then I'll come back and I'll draft this. But even though those hanks look like a tiny amount of fiber, they go and go and go, and silk works best, at least from what I've seen, if you do teeny tiny, tiny plies that are like thread weight, and then you ply them together in the number of plies that you want to make it thicker. So um, this does spin very nicely as thread. And so uh, I, I will try and find the name of her channel and put it in the description, also put it in the cards because she's a channel well worth watching if you want some very um, beautiful homesteading ideas and 
it, I don't think it matters what part of the country you're in, you can kind of take something away from what she's sharing. All right, so now because I had pre-plied or pre-drafted, I'm just gonna let a lot of twist into it. And um, I was um, a little bit taken aback when she, when the lady that came and showed us the silk and, and brought the supplies, that I was really surprised that when she showed us her weaving, that it was very dull. It, it really did just look like cotton. Now, I, I don't necessarily want to grow cotton. I know in this area you had to be careful about growing cotton, like maybe the uh, government is quite into how and when you're allowed to grow cotton because they don't want you to bring in what they said was boll weevils, which will actually attack and hurt your cotton. Cotton is heavily sprayed in most areas, heavily, uh, heavily pesticide and herbicide uh, sprayed. And so if you have an option to grow something else that doesn't have as much of a problem to be grown organically, something like the silkworms or the flax that I'm kind of excited. To, oh, I have those seeds. I should show you the seeds. So much. So much to show you guys. I was really excited. I found these on Etsy. Oh no, where are they? Oh, where are they? Helios says, so John is getting some new silk socks. Yes. Right? Yes, he is. That sounds slimy. Okay, so these are the seeds, and I ordered them because I do not know if regular flax that you just get from the grocery store will work and be the same as textile uh, flax linen. So I may have just been taken for a ride on this. That is perfectly legitimate to ask because they look exactly like just flax seeds. They just look like flax seeds, but flax is turned into linen, and I don't know if there's different categories of seed like hemp you have marijuana that you would smoke and then you've got hemp that you would grow and then turn into textiles they're two different they're related but they have completely different uses that way and so um i kind of wonder i i'm hoping that there's a difference in the flaxes or I'm kind of hoping that there's not a difference because it would be a lot easier and cheaper just to go to the health food store and buy this huge old bag of flax seeds. But I'm not going to plant them next to each other. I will try just this tiny little bag of what I have and see how that does because if there is a difference and I plant them next to each other, they're going to cross pollinate and then I won't be able to save the seeds. So mandolin, as opposed to mandolin, says, I'm excited about my loofah gourds. Uh, going to start them tomorrow. Oh, fun. Woo. We, we haven't had a season that was long enough to grow those. So we've never experimented with them. But they're what you make um, loofahs, like scrubby skin mm -hmm. loofahs. Mm -hmm. Super cool. My wheel is super squeaky tonight. Thanks. <laughs> we had uh, what were those pot cleaners in Florida. Was that a bamboo? Do you remember? And it came from real wood, and they just cut the wood, like, cross-sectioned with the grain. <gasps> no, that was coconut. Is that coconut? Mm-hmm. Okay. Those are wood. Those are cool. Mm. Hey, Shannon. How are you? So she says, yes, you should in Oklahoma. What? Grow the loofah board. Oh, okay. And Helios did say about the silk socks. I have never... That, so there's a huge difference between um, silk and linen those kind of cool weather cloth um, textiles, a wool garment will stretch because there's a lot of kink and twist and crimp in wool. And so it retains its shape like elastic. Uh, silk and linen does not, they are straight. And when you spin them, they are very silky and drapey and they allow air to move through. They don't hold the heat in, um, but as far as being able to turn them into a garment that needs to hold its shape like socks, they don't have the characteristics to do that um, unless you blended them with something else that did have that ability to retain its shape. Or if you didn't mind that your socks would always be falling down around your heels. Mm -hmm. I've never tried to do it. But is there such a thing as a silk sock? Like 100% silk dress socks? I don't know. I could look into that because that's an interesting thought. No. 
case you guys didn't know, there are all sorts of channels out there that have children in them that the comments are becoming disabled. And one of them is SBSK, SBSK, and they're trying to get a petition signed so that they can get their comments put back on because that channel pertains to disabled people and it allows disabled people to converse with each other and find each other and find encouragement and find encouragement for their families. And so if you guys are interested in helping a channel that is currently really having a, a rough time, uh, their comments should not have been removed. They, they're not dealing with young children. They're mostly uh, disabled adults. It's called SBSK. Um, I think it's special books for special kids. I think is what it is when it's all, all spelled out, but it's a fantastic channel. So we have a comment, Nikki McMains says, I believe rain will be all bamboo will need to become invasive. You might want to do a little more research to save yourself from a future problem. Well, and that's true. I, I think that's very um, good advice. Uh, here across from us, they have planted their bamboo in the spaces between concrete and it looks like they're continually replanting it. So I kind of wonder if the variety we're seeing here in Oklahoma is not one that is a bad spreading kind. Because the only bamboo that I've seen shows up in clumps and you don't see a lot of new growth around the outside. You see tall adult plants, but not a lot of small growing plants. But yes, I am going to look into that because for one thing, we do still get enough cold in the winter that I believe there are some bamboos that would not thrive here. And, um, but because I don't know about local willows or what pests or anything goes, has problems here spreading, that kind of thing, I, I am doing a lot of research and pretty much the only thing I'm planning on growing immediately is just the plants that are in my window. I want to put them in some pots get those in and do a couple of short raised beds. If you guys remember the brick beds that I made last year at the little rental house, the tiny rental house, I took old bricks and put them on top of cardboard, filled it up with chicken manure, put some mulch over the top so the chicken manure didn't burn the roots, put some potting soil over the top, and that's where I put in my herbs. I will do something similar to that at this house because I don't want to till up the land. The land here is very smooth and pockmark free. There don't appear to be any gophers. The The lawn is very pristine. The pastures look good. And so I don't want to take a good thing and ruin it by tilling it at the beginning without really knowing if it's even worth tilling. If the soil is bad, I might as well just build raised beds and bring in my own manure and my own uh, soil and improve upon the soil from the top rather than digging into it. Helio says, military issues silk gloves are used for extreme cold as an innermost layer. Interesting. I bet it would feel nice and, and allow for evaporation. It would be a wicking. But, it, but it's 100% silk. They're not putting, is that what you said, 100% silk? Mm, I don't know. I would just be curious because silk does not hold, it, it holds a very flat shape. It does not hold a cupping, uh, snug shape. My spinning wheel is super, super squeaky tonight, if you couldn't tell. I wonder why. Usually it's because I have, like, positioned myself not straight from it. Let's see if I can just switch it. Oh, but, that, but now the spinning wheel's out. No, honey. You're not allowed to converse. Pretend you don't exist. Now you can see it, and not quite so much of me. Hopefully, I, oh my gosh, these people. We're sorry if you can hear all the drama from our neighbors. It is a lot of drama. A lot of drama. Drama queens. Shh. And the, no, sorry, Amanda Lynn says, I have silk socks that I've loved while I was snowboarding as the layer went next to my skin, my feet stayed so warm. Yes. Well, that must be, when I saw the video of the Asian uh, Asian girl, she, that was what they were, and they had like this many layers, just a huge amount of silk 
um, hanks to make that quilt. I mean, it was this thick, and I looked at them and thought, that cannot be warm. That's just silk. Mandy can you Lynn. hear them? Yes, I mean, yeah. can hear them right. This is the Take most dramatic night that we've had so far from our neighbors, but it's been escalating over the last like three nights. I don't know if somebody new moved in. A new roommate. Do we need to check that the van is locked? It's not that side, is it? It's that and side. Yeah, there's a five people in there. Wholesome Roots says hi. Hey, Wholesome Roots, how are you? Mandy said, flaxseed and linseed, yes, they are exactly the same. Is there any difference between the two that you, you all are aware of? So, flaxseed and linseed is the same. They are exactly the same. But the difference that I'm looking at is the difference between maybe a, because you can have different names, different cultivars within the same family, that have different characteristics. Like you can have a Duroc pig, or you can have a spot, a spotted pig. Well, but, but that's not the right word. Um, spotted, large, large, spotted, large white. Okay, so large white or a Duroc. They're both pigs, but one is much larger than the other, and one likes to graze where the other one likes to root. They have very different personality and physical characteristics. So with the flaxseed, it is flaxseed, it is linseed but I'm hoping that there's different cultivars within the family that will allow me to, nope, sit down. Kaya, sit down. You're not going out to mess with neighbors. Go upstairs. Um, well, I don't want her to go upstairs because she's quite dirty. She needs to shower. So we're gonna let her sit down here and wait. <laughs> Man, Lynn says, I don't miss having neighbors that close. I lived in LA. I love my two and a half acres in the country. Oh, yeah. Yes, acreage. Dharma D says, that sounds wonderful. We have a very nice, noisy neighborhood. Yeah, I Usually I ours is not that, I mean. Well, yeah, we always have traffic. We always have traffic, but we haven't had problems with neighbors. Um, we had both on either side of us were empty for several months. And then they started to kind of fill in the apartments a little bit. And now we're experiencing the late night drama. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll make it. We're, I, I think I'm going to start wearing ear, the girls don't seem to hear it as much at night, but I'm going to start wearing earplugs and like turning on music or something on my phone because a lot of it is dramatic enough that you really don't want those stories in your head <laughs> when they're up that late at night. The kicker, we're right in town, six blocks from downtown. Is that currently mandolin? Or... And two and a half acres in downtown LA. No, she's I'm not, not in sure. LA yeah, yeah. anymore. Anyway, fans help. Sort of. I get yelled at to truck when I turn on a fan. I do not like having things moving on me at night. I I struggle to sleep, and so we we have a compromise. We turn the fan on low. Is that why Artvark gave us those fans? It was so for we noise. Didn't hear the neighbors. Uh. I don't know. So Mandy Lynn says it's only a matter of time before y'all find your forever homestead. We hope so. We only knew how much time it would be. We're, we feel like we're almost there. We feel like everything is working. I still have trepidation because I am, it does feel like a new, a new step, a very new, somewhat frightening step because we will be out of town and things will be very different. Um, but I'm also excited to get the garden planted and see what it's like to grow in a tropical environment compared to Idaho. It's practically tropical compared to Idaho. It's really not even subtropical. I mean, really, it's just hot in the summer for a couple months, but <laughs> Idaho doesn't get hot. It's warm. So... Tommy D says, hope things quiet down a bit. I think I, let's see, a bit, I think it could be because some folks are hitting the bottle on St. Patrick's Day. Ah. I can't drink, so it's corned beef and cabbage and carrots for me. 
Oh, yes. and it's, we, we forget every year. We have two wedding anniversaries, John and I. One of them is St. Patrick's Day and one of them is April Fool's Day. And, um, you we, long time viewers would. You long time viewers would remember that from years ago when we made that video. So we, uh, we, we're not real celebrators and festive, festivity type people. We always, we never celebrate our anniversary. We're always more like, oh wait, was that today? Oh honey, happy, happy anniversary. Uh, but yeah, St. Patrick's Day, it would be a day that people are out drinking beer and having Get shenanigans. Down. And we're trying to have a quiet little spinning video of ruining the Oh my goodness, I really am putting on earbuds tonight because I just cannot. But the, the thing is during the day the girls are super noisy because they go out and have free-for-all sword fights with the neighbor kids. And so if anybody was trying to nap in our neighborhood, our children would then be the, the reason they couldn't. Good job, kid. <laughs> no, Dad asked Yeah. Yeah, that's not okay. No, it is. It's okay. Oh, let's see. Right? Mandolin says, haha, it's just payback. Right. Mandolin, do not encourage this man. <laughs> I do not. Oh, it isn't nice. It oh, isn't nice, but we do, do all I can to pay the rest So wholesome nice. roots. How long are you planning so on this? So they're not being no. nice. Shh. That's reading. Also, it says, how long are you planning on being at this location? In the apartment? Probably about three weeks. <laughs> no, three weeks left. We hope. If it's not three weeks and it ends up that we don't get this house, then I don't know what we're going to do. Because I have got so many plants in this <laughs> window. And at this particular apartment, we don't really have a sidewalk to put things on. So I can't really take them outside and put them somewhere safe that people won't trip over them. And so I may have to just give away all my herbs uh, because they are literally taking over the kitchen right now. Kipping 110 says, are you going to enjoy the cyclone bomb? So the worst that we got from that, that was, I'll explain. The worst that we got from that was the wind, uh, the days that it happened. My sister is up in Iowa right now, and she said that they got such heavy rain that they had record flooding from it. Mm -hmm. A cyclone bomb is basically the equivalent of a hurricane over a continent. And so it started in Denver. There's this huge snowstorm. This and year? Across Nebraska, Nebraska this week. Oh. And then she just dumped on everybody. So, so we only got the wind and a tiny skiff of rain one day. Isn't that pretty? It's actually neat. Okay, so I'm going to try and show you guys what they look like. So how easy they are to pull apart. So there's... The layers you can see it like that and those are where the cocoons were pulled over the chair and then down around each other so you can see just how many layers there are and off of this one hank just how much you have to spin not sure if that one is attached to another one so that's how many layers there are and i've already pulled one off aren't those pretty so wholesome roots since they came in late says rainbow fiber. Yes. Next Have you tried to do the 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 silkworm cocoons that they stretch down over the frame? That's what these are. These are silk, and again, they're easy to handle. Instead of having like that nasty chalky feeling of dry fiber. Speaking of which, um, that nasty chalky feeling you get when you work with uh, just silk by itself. These ones don't feel that way. They feel more like Angora rabbit wool does in that it's kind of floaty, but the fibers are so long that it doesn't get up in the air. It may like try to wrap around your fingers a little bit, but it doesn't get up in the air. Wholesome Ruth says never use silk. Okay, so these you would love. If you, love. If you like love, love, love. really delicate fiber and you want something you can wear in the summer, I highly recommend these. I'm not recommending roving. I hate roving. I hate the recycled sari stuff. Oh, I hate them. Hate them. That's why I don't wear summer clothes that I've spun up to this point is because I do not like how they feel on my fingers. I do not like how they spin up. But this stuff is dreamy. Um, I wish I could find a way to open it up that didn't make me feel like I was kind of mixing the colors. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm going to test out my neighbors. 
progressed quite a few steps, but finally mandolin goes in and says, John, you have an amp for a guitar or drums. Yeah, and I have the that. kibosh. I have put the kibosh on that because I don't think it's... So uh, so not only do I have... I have a I know, base, but I have to live here during the day when 18, they come over here with machetes and hack an us to pieces. I have an 18-inch 40-watt bass amplifier that will seriously rattle the walls This is what you get for not going down. to church today, mm -hmm. is now you have evil thoughts in your head. No, that's not what these they evil teach. thoughts happened at three in the morning four <laughs> nights ago. Yeah, so. but we, the girls and I are here by ourselves when you're not at work, so let's not create any mortal enemies. You're going to come you to the window the and kill us. You know where the firearms are. We're no. good. No. Yes. Okay, stop. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can you do no, something? No, I am not a cat. You do not <laughs> point and click at mom on a live stream. No, but you get the laser pointer to do it. <laughs> Shh, Kaya, mom, see, sit. Mandy. I it. So now Mandulin says Mama Bear would come out. Yes, I would, exactly. but I've got three weeks. I've got three weeks not to have these people just absolutely hate our guts. Why? So We only have three weeks where they would absolutely hate our guts. I know, but three weeks. I, okay. I, so, don't, I don't want to do that. And right. we can kill them with kindness. Maybe we'll take them some almond cookies. I think I have a song called Kindness. It has a good bass riff that I could play through my amplifier. Uh, it would be set. Um... Mary Kate Hilton says the night before y'all move, let them have it. Amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Y'all, this was supposed to be a Christian channel. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get me killed. And my children. Wholesome well, Ruth says more, sh more sugar with honey. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I think that I have a song called Pour Some Sugar on Me, too. Right. It's got a really good bass. sugar <laughs> I think what it teaches us more than anything is that we're not apartment people. I don't think there maybe is yes. such a thing as apartment people when it comes to this kind of thing. I think nobody really tolerates this very well. It may be why New Yorkers are so irritable at times. Because <laughs> they um, don't never sleep. The city that never sleeps. Because they never sleep. This is why. Because yeah. they're all on top of each other. But at the same time, there are some good things about being here in the city that we like. We like oh, yeah. the park that's across the street. We like that there are our bike riding paths. We like that we have the proximity to the nice grocery stores and the kids have really fun kids to play with. So there are good things about it. And we actually were okay-ish with the apartments. The traffic was really loud, but until we had issues with the neighbor, it was okay. We were, we were pretty much handling it. Um, I'm trying to figure out how not to turn this into um, dryer lint where if I'm worried that if I just stick my fingers in the middle and pull, that I'm gonna get some colors that are blending so much that you can't really see any um, color differentiation. They just kind of all look <laughs> mucky. I like Mandy Lynn. I like Mandy Lynn she too. She says play Flyleaf on 10. Yes. <laughs> what is that? Or uh, what's the other, Otep. I've, I've started some of these wars with neighbors before when they were across the street and a distance away. Not intentionally, but just like by not using careful words when I told them that their dog was going to kill my goat and that I was not going to tolerate that. She said she was going to shoot their dog. If it came over onto our property and killed my animals, I would shoot their dog. So I was trying to warn them kindly that I did not want to shoot their dog. Mortal and that turned into a mortal. horror show of nasty. They, all sorts of nasty. And so now I try really, really hard to just be like, take a deep breath. Their dog is not killing your goat. They're just not letting you sleep at night. Also, it says apartment life was hard on me too. Yeah. 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 And what was, somebody said about when did, or did you realize you're not apartment people yes yeah, so I realized about 2 59 a.m. the other night um, <laughs> well and we had we were pretty sure that we weren't apartment people when we moved into this apartment um, John really really likes to be out in the sticks he likes to be out in the boonies he doesn't like to have neighbors and I, I love to have dirt to play with and so we were pretty sure that it wasn't going to be long-lived but I wanted to try it I wanted to see what can I grow here uh, you know, if we were ever in a situation like this before, or if we have some viewers who are in a situation where they have to be in an apartment, can we show how to do it in as livable a way as we possibly can? And so that's what I have been trying to do. But let me tell you, it has not been my natural setting. It has been interesting. It's been a learning experience. And it's once again reinforced that I need to listen better to my husband. Because when he was trying to find a place for us, 
while we were in Idaho last year, he's like, are you sure about this apartment thing? Are you sure this is what you want to do? Because I think you're going to go nuts. You're not going to have any projects to do and you're just going to lose it. And I'm like, no, it'll be fine. We can totally do this. And now I'm just like, oh my gosh, let me out. Empty hammock soon. Hey, empty. Okay. So empty hammock has been doing some really fun videos. If you guys have not seen him fixing up a hoarder house, um, they've done this before. They, they did the same thing with their uh, forever house and, and paying off their house in cash and doing some really fun things. But he's got this really fun house he's working on right now. I have been cringing every time I see him in the house, but um, it has been interesting and he's always really good with his editing skills. And if you guys ever saw the primitive technology spoof that, that is on my channel, he made that. And so that's one of my absolute favorite videos on my channel. Um, and so you should make sure to go check them out. Empty Hammock. So Mandolin says, Julie, you're in the South. It's okay to be a little redneck. My redneck side came out when my neighbor's dog was chasing my cat and Polite went right out the window. Oh, yeah. We heard about that in church last week, <laughs> that some little kid was riding his uh, little dirt bike in the um, in some drainage canals and everything, and one of the neighbors came out and like totally yelled at him, and she said, oh, I was going to get ready to, oh, she used some words in church that were really, really funny, and it was the mother's group on top of that, and she's a very polite southern lady, and so it was just really funny to see what happened when somebody told her, made her kid cry. Uh, yeah. I've no, I don't think I've ever seen a southern woman go all... Go lose her. Yeah, I, I never have seen that. Wow. Yeah. Have I? I don't think uh, I have. Was that today? No, that was a couple weeks ago. The Wholesome Road says, will you be able to have goats at next place? As long as it's not an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> the one that we're looking at right now, it has fences that will hold horses in, which is kind of my main objective right now, is to get the horses out of the... Uh, lease property that we're on right now it's a month-to-month -month lease so we're not breaking anything by having them by removing them but um, the, the property that's actually fenced now is just fenced with horse <laughs> fence it won't hold any goats in what no let yes. me finish my sentence Southern women let going me... crazy it's hilarious what go ahead just and so I'm going to wait until I have it does have a barn and it has a really nice shop behind it. I'm probably most excited about the shop um, it has electricity to it. It has pegboards. Peg boards are the material of my heart because you can put tools on them. And I haven't had anywhere to put my tools in a long time. It didn't involve a tiny space apartment or a shed that was we were actually living in. So I'm super excited about the pegboard. Um, so I'm going to wait on the goats until after I come back from setting up the water in Idaho because I don't want to have so many animals that it's not going to be easy for John to keep everything alive and I I'm just not going to have time between us closing the house closing on the house and and the time I need to leave to get safe structures and with the rabbits and the ponies they're pretty self-contained John doesn't have to do anything but check on food and water every three days um, you know just peek in and make sure they're alive but he shouldn't have to feed or actually water them more often than about every three days so my my big thing when we get there is just to set up automatic systems so that while I'm gone everything stays alive and um, we just have time to kind of take a deep breath before I start to worry about putting in permanent systems. There's so many different ways I want to build a chicken coop right now. If I tried to start on anything I think it would be a waste because I think I needed to sit back and watch and um, see what the property wants to have done to it as we kind of watch. It's so important with your homestead to watch for the first year before you put in anything permanent. Oh, that's what's moving, it's your screen. I'm like, is that smoke? It's not, it's just a light on the ceiling. Okay, Dad wanted to say something. I don't remember. Southern women. Lots of Southern, it was hilarious. Uh, let's see, way Southern women can get a bit uh, crazy. LOL, it's from Kay, Mary Kay Milton. I've never seen that. Wholesome Roots says, Southern women go off for real. Really? So to which Mary Bit Kate comes back and says, yes, yes we do. <laughs> uh, and then Mandolin chimes in and says, right, don't mess with mama bear. Well, and I, I, I thought about that the other day when they honked at the girls. Oh, that was Reggie trying to scare us. No, I, 
I'm talking about the different time where they like. I'm not talking about that time. It was a different. Well, time. I actually, and and then I thought about it, and I'm like, I'm kind of glad they're honking because these kids come running through from the back to the front, and and I kind of like that the adults are honking a little bit to let the kids know that they're there in the parking lot moving the vehicle, because there's very little space in the front, and we have had conversations with the girls several times about only playing in the back. Can you go wash your face, kiddo? Okay, you see how far apart I'm having to go in order to get this drafted? These fibers are so long that if you're any closer than that, you are working too hard. But it does feel a little weird to be pre-drafting from that distance. So, did you want to talk about the battery birds? Oh. So I did want to get a whole bunch of laying hens, and I loved the chickens last time that we got from the um, battery. They're battery chickens that are, are what are they? They're 18 industrial months old? layers that are. But they were super young. They had they had gone through their first most productive like six months of laying, and then they were going to get rid of them. So maybe they were only a year old, but they were super young laying hens from the local egg laying farms. And they come looking super, super rough. They're missing most of their feathers. They don't know how to scratch the ground. They got they're, mites. Yeah, they got mites. Their, their beaks have been clipped so that they're not pointed. But after... They've had a rough life. They've had a rough life. And, the, and a lot of them die on the trip from the egg laying factory to the consumer, which would be us. But... After about three months, their feathers have grown back. They've figured out how to scratch, and they're good layers, and it gives them a happy life. And so they only cost like one or two dollars a head as opposed to 20 if you're buying them here locally. And for me, because I want to get a whole bunch of chickens and I'm inexperienced with homesteading in this area, it seems like it gives them a happy life and it gives me something that's gentle in my pocketbook. But I I do feel a little skeevy about it as far as supporting people who treat their animals that way. So there's kind of that conflict in my mind about, you know, the way they ship them so that there are so many that die and the way that they're, I, I don't know, I, I, everybody has to make a living. But I don't necessarily want to support animal cruelty. I, anyway, so I'm conflicted yes. on that. But it is well, so exciting to see them turn around and feel better. And what we're looking at is potentially, I, I talked to one of the, not really neighbors, but somebody who was close to the area where we're going, and they said, sure enough, coyotes are a big problem out there. As they are and most so, places. Sure. And so I'm, I'm planning on, we're going to lose a lot of animals, a lot of birds the first year, trying to get that corrected. Um, Which is what, one of the reasons I'm thinking about temporary pasture that is electric fence that you move from place to place. I could, I could get goats sooner rather than trying to put in permanent fences. And the electric fences keep out predators much better than a regular fence because the coyotes get shocked too. Yes, they can bounce over, but usually it teaches them enough caution that um, they think twice before they come after your flock. And ratchet up one really good and hot. So. Well, it would fry the chickens too if it was that hot. It could. Um, but then dinner's already cooked, so we're good. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, so those are all things I'm kind of <clears throat> thinking about that I'm, I'm going to... I don't generally spend a lot of time on blogs or Pinterest or anything anymore um, because I kind of feel like the Idaho homestead is pretty complete. But I'm so new to the Oklahoma area that suddenly I'm back on Pinterest, I'm finding all these new blogs that I want to follow because they're talking about these things that need to be addressed. And um, so I'm kind of excited to have something to research again. We got to meet Mandel and Bradshaw face to face. Well, yeah, we, I was supposed to. We were supposed to go out and, and do a spin-in and, and an alpaca farm thing, but it was, again, the story of I don't travel very far without John. Right. Well, two comments. She says, one of my shirts says, pretty and pink, dangerous in camo. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Um, and the other one's uh, talking about the coyote. She says, Don, John, you have, looks like you have built-in target practice. Exactly. Yeah. And but I will have an elevated shooting range to find them from, too. It's going to be so But perfect. for any of you people that are new to city life, you do have to be very cautious about what your backdrop is. Even if you're shooting at a coyote, if you miss... And there are residences or... I.e. she doesn't 
trust him. I don't trust him to be careful about what his backdrop is. That you do well, have to be very, very we careful. Don't have really, any neighbors then, huh? Well, but the people who own the property might be on their property at the time that you're shooting. So you always have to look beyond your target, not just at the target. You have to see what's behind it when you're doing that kind of long distance shooting. Now, all of this being said, nobody has ever even come close to an accident. Who's nobody? But she, she doesn't believe. Nobody who? Nobody us. We've never been. We've never on shot at coyotes side. on our own property We've before. We've never been on either side. Uh, yeah. I've shot with a BB gun at cows that were coming over my fence. I shot at quite a few of horrible, nasty little critters up there. Mandela says pellet rifle. Nah. I have Let's used the pellet hog. rifle. Well, well, we'll just get the job done efficiently. But some people have said that they really like to use paint guns. And I think you have to be somewhat close to hit them with that. But it would be something that would allow you to kind of see what your range is. And... I would be much more comfortable with shooting something initially with a paintball gun and and just getting used to the landscape and where the wind's blowing and what you're hitting and, and what's behind you with something like that. So the good news is we have the survey plot and it looks like I have exactly 175 yards from the house to each corner, 157 or so to um, most of the land. So I pretty much got zeroed in beautifully. Um, so, we're good. What is a paint gun? See, see pool Emmy. I guess that's... It, it shoots little pool. balls of paint that hurt when they hit you, but it shows that, that you've been hit. So, somebody had recommended in one of the live shows that you use paintball guns on neighborhood dogs if they come after chickens, and that way the neighbors see that the dogs have been shot with a paintball gun, and they maybe know to keep their animals on their property, but it doesn't really hurt the dogs. Or they use that as evidence to call the police and blame you for everything. So, anyway. Pool Lammy says 223? Question mark? Uh, yep. I got Good a 1023. So, uh, Mandela says also watch out for feral hogs. They are bad. Um, we haven't heard of any pig problems up here. Uh, in fact, I think everybody has kind of said no, that's not they, they aren't here yet. The, so. There's quite a lot in Texas. Yeah, a lot in Texas, but they're... I mean, they'll get here. Where are feral hogs? Wild pigs. We can capture some and breed. Mm. Solar-powered lights, the motion-activated are common enough now, even mainstays have them. Oh, that's right, and I had somebody that wanted to send me a motion-detecting um, camera that links to your phone. They wanted to send it to me to try it, and that it actually will record if you choose to record it and so that I could even record what's happening on the property at night. <laughs> it's always nice to get stuff through the channel because then you don't have to spend your own money trying to experiment with things. But sometimes what they send you is just not very high quality. So you kind of have to take the good with the bad there. But we had some things that have been sent to us that have been really nice. Our heater, like our space heater, that we did a video on last year, that one was super nice. We still have it and it's just a trooper. And they sent an air filter, an air purifier that John used in the little rental house that helped save his lungs because I think it had mold or something in it. His lungs were not getting better. So sometimes they send us things that are really worth having. Um, but I'm not really the gadget person, so me getting that light is going to be interesting. And it's solar powered. The bat, the camera is solar powered. Sweet. I just haven't told him yes yet. I wasn't sure if we needed it. I just wonder how we would fit it into a homesteading and gardening. I guess you, if you're night gardening. Well, no, it's about watching the animals. It'll I record know. the animals. I thought that was funny. It's okay. Well, where were we? Just some wherever we thought that we were seeing evidence of animals like deer or coyotes. Okay, so this is the handle of fluff. This is what it looks like so far, and I do need to put it on a card so that it doesn't get tangled on itself. And I don't really want to add it to this bobbin because this bobbin is so very white and it will 
definitely not turn into what I wanted to turn into if I now add rainbow. <laughs> rainbow and white? Yeah. Well, it would be pretty because if you knitted it the <laughs> right way. Yeah, that's true. Mandela says, I'm proficient with a BB gun and air rifle go on. And air rifle going to try compound bow very soon. That we sounds We do fun. actually have all of those. We do. We got a break barrel pellet gun that actually was very high performance, and I put a scope on it, and it managed to tag everything on the Idaho property that needed to be taken care of. So. Mostly cows trying to come over the fences. Mm -hmm. And it was enough that it made a point but not so much that it would um, cause injury yeah so I think that was the perfect balance for that but it's really hard because you can only do one at a time it doesn't reload you have to open it snap it close it yeah you got one and shot. shoot and it's very tedious so if you need it to be fast that's not what you want <laughs> the redneck pep prepper I live in Arkansas nice town on AR nice town um, yes it is a good area down here for more efficient firearms besides a uh, or arms besides a pellet gun. Um, and Kai and I have bows and arrows that can shoot over. They're supposed to be toys, but they're legit. They can shoot over two hundred yards. They're good for something, but not kill someone. Okay, Mandy Lynn has a question. Is there anything beyond the land you're looking for in a new homestead? I know you're. You are looking at the land rather than the existing house and bathrooms mean a lot, but what else? Um, well, we felt like with this house, even though I forgot to film it, yes, as I finished the film yesterday, I realized that once again I forgot to film the house. Um, it's definitely not the first thing I look at at all, but when we went back and took a second look the next day, we looked at it and like, oh, this is so exciting. It actually has enough space for us. We have enough bedrooms. We have enough bathrooms so that we're not lining up at the door. One thing that we did want is we did want a fireplace or a wood-burning stove, one or the other. We would have liked to have had a well, but a lot of times the groundwater can have weird things in it, so if we had done a well, we would have needed to put a filtration system on it most likely. It wouldn't be a bad idea for us to put a filter, a water filter on it now because the water here is uh, treated pretty heavily and we would like to not have that in our drinking water so over time we probably will put a pretty good system on the whole house um, but we prefer hardwood to carpet because when you're on a farm and you're coming in and out and doing chores you, you know you've got stuff on your shoes but because we do have carpet we're probably going to try and be a no shoes family um, so we'll see how long that lasts. Or an inside shoes, outside shoes sort of thing. Or an inside shoes, More outside shoes. More shoes for dad. Right? <laughs> not, not delightful. Whatever. It's so nice. Um, I am the minimalist and he is the let me have more. Mm -hmm. Which probably balances us out pretty good. Um, so, uh, what else do we look for? Low maintenance, we really like low maintenance. I like not to have too many rooms, not to have too much carpet. We have a little bit of carpet. Um, just, we really like low maintenance. And I like a big square kitchen with an island. The reason for that is that I have a lot of food storage, a lot of raw ingredients, and um, I like it to be in the kitchen, but I don't like to have it all be one straight line. I don't like the galley kitchen. I like the big open round kitchen with the island in the middle so that when you're canning or doing other things you have plenty of space. Aardvark just got in from dinner. Dot, 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 dot. Hey Aardvark. Aardvark is making fun of me for my tree dwelling tick fear. But. Well it is a fear that has come to fruition twice. It came to fruition twice. Although plus we once figured out age. where those that came to fruition at so. No because one of them, two of them happened here. It, anyway. So, Aardvark and I have a confrontational uh, relationship over Oklahoma and whether or not it is really heaven. 
I hope that eventually I think that Oklahoma is heaven. There are parts of it I de definitely like a lot. And the people are a pretty big plus for me. It doesn't seem to matter where I go, we meet some really wonderful, kind, genuine people, especially among the homesteading community. I feel like they are just the salt of the earth and, and there's just been a lot of kindness. Um, so I really enjoy the people. There are parts of the weather that I really enjoy, but we haven't really been here for the extreme weather yet. Mm -hmm. But also the thing, what? You, what? Is somebody saying something snarky? It's yeah. Adventist no, stop, bark. stop, stop. Okay, the one thing I don't like about Oklahoma is that my husband and the aardvark team up on me just a little bit no, and point I'm out my eccentricities. Let me, let me just, there you go, the very bottom one. If you want to read it out loud, feel free. Yeah. Okay, so it was natives who told us about the tree diving ticks. It wasn't, and well, we don't even know if they came from the trees. I got them while I was going through my garden, and then the second time I got them, it was from being out and just walking through the grass when we were looking at horses. And that's when Paige got hers too. Either that or well, she rubbed up against a bush. We don't really or know. Or was this couch? We don't know. Yeah, because the couch rubbed up against a bush. We just says, don't know. Elaine Miller says you have to wear a scarf. Yeah, I actually have one picked out on Etsy. <laughs> and I make, think I'm going to do like a Why don't you make one snood, out of all the silk? I a mean, snood, 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 snood. Have you guys seen the Jewish head scarves? where you like, it kind of looks a little bit like a turban. That may be my look for the summer. It's like a scarf on my neck, a hood on my head, sleeves down to my wrists, gloves, really tall socks, big boots, jeans. I will- You just should become Sharia Muslim. I will dress for the Idaho summer and hope that it doesn't absolutely melt me in the Oklahoma summer. We'll see how it goes. Hmm. <laughs> Mandolin says, Julie, when we get together, it's going to be Daniel and John against us. Yeah, I can handle that because then it's two against two. But two, two against, against one, one thing is not fun. <laughs> mm. uh. Let's see. Well, what are we doing? Okay, shh, shh. What is it nice? What are we, what? Huh. Go up and get in your shower, okay? I believe there's a towel up there. Go. Scoot. Oh. Dharma's, Dharma D is saying, where are they nice? I think people, right? Oh, yeah. So. Oklahomans are amazingly nice At people. least the amazing. native Oklahomans. The ones who have the accent. The ones who have at least a little bit of an accent. They are amazing the, They do seem a little bit different from the transplants. They have been exceptionally warm people, even if they're just random. No, 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 no. Go upstairs to take your clothes off. <laughs> I don't know why she feels like she needs to like... Well, why can't I take my... No, you, no, no, go yeah. upstairs. Oh, go upstairs. Oh, gosh. Um, I called an electrician the other day because we had some things that we needed some quotes on for the new house. And we have an out of And he sat call. and talked to me for 15 minutes before we ever got around to what it was that I was asking him to do. And he just wanted to welcome us to the area and, and just talk about how funny it was that we were getting all these crank calls and that's why he answered the phone funny. And everybody, everybody that I've talked to in this area, um, or if they've been here for a while, just seem to be very kind, um, welcoming people. Amazing. I can't think of any nicer people. Except for our neighbors. Yeah, they except for the are... neighbors. And they're the transplants. So. <laughs> well, we don't know that. We haven't no, talked I'm to them. We sure. haven't heard the accent. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We haven't heard the accent. Yeah, we've met a couple of people. Hey, sh sh children, not allowed to talk on the channel. Thank you, my dear. Let's Love see. you so much. Man, this is haha. -ha, get to the sticks. Southern charm is at its best. Also, always offer sweet tea. <laughs> well, I have been making kombucha for John, and it has been pretty sweet. Okay, I wanted to show you guys what it looks like. So it looks like it's not very much, but it's pre-drafted, and so that's just ready to spin like that. I just think it's so fascinating. So fascinating. All right, so did we have any other big pressing questions that anybody wants to ask? Um, again, this is the this is what I've already spun up. Some of this is silk and some of this is bamboo just because I did not have a free bobbin. I only have three bobbins and so I kind of have to... So it's like a bam silk? Bam silk. Silk boo? I don't know. 
So that's bamboo, and then this little stripe here that's a little bit darker, that's the silk. And then to compare that, I've mm. got, um, what? Nothing. To compare that, I've got, ahem, <coughs> me. <laughs> Most true southerners lack a pitcher of Lipton tea with a cup of sugar. Yes, that's why my sh sugar, blood sugar is going through the roof. And that's a dog hair. That's from a husky um, uh, Australian Shepherd mix. So that's dog fur, dog yarn. And it is actually yarn. That is actually yarn. And then, um, and then this is Angora. That's from the rabbit that you guys saw a couple days ago, Bun Bun. And that's his <laughs> fiber that I spun up. Mandolin it's says, if you don't nice. like them, give an unsweet. Oh, <laughs> so true. Mandolin, like... you are. <laughs> we will have fun, yes, once we actually get together. We've been trying for a bit, but again, I get so tired by driving and taking kids with me and everything. It is really hard for me to get out to events. Um, let's see, John, should you, would, would you like me to repost these two? Yes, Mary-Kate, that would be fantastic. Um, did you see the ones that I was talking about that I shared? Yeah, the, she posted them. Oh, did you post them? She posted oh, them earlier. Oh, thank she you. Does, yeah, she wants to repost. There's, she has one that shows you how to do silk and one that shows you how to do wool. But again, I don't know which ones they are because it's all Chinese. I have no idea what... I have to look at the picture in order to know what it is she's doing. But yes, thank you for posting that about that channel. That channel is my inspiration right now and it shows how much time that that farm is probably hundreds of years old if not older they have the rock walls and they have the established gardens and the fruit trees and whenever you see an orchard that is actually producing you know that you've got probably you know 20 years if not much longer if you have producing fruit trees on a homestead so it shows that you have generations of work that went into this place and and this farm this chinese farm is absolutely inspiring and it, it also shows that as you work the soil, as you amend the soil, that it gets better, you have fewer weeds, and it starts to balance out its systems so that they all work together, and you don't have to work as hard. You have to harvest, and that's pretty much it. Um, thanks, Mandy Lynn. Yes, thanks, Mary Kate, for posting. Um, um. Chelsea said, my pet rabbit was named Bun Bun when I was young. He was the best rabbit. He, our rabbit that we have right now is a pretty good little rabbit. We, we sure like him, and I'm really excited. I have one more cage that I need to set up. Did we already set up the cage? We didn't set up the cage. We just cleaned the old one, didn't we? I'm really excited to get these cages hung and to have things look nice. I want to put up wood in the barn and then whitewash it so that it's easier to see in there. I have a lot of things I want to do. And probably the last thing on our list right now is to get some kind of small trailer that the van can haul, that the van can pull, because I'm not going to be able to put manure or lumber or anything in the back of the van and have the van stay nice. So once we have our appliances and everything in the new house, that is gonna be my first order of business is to get some kind of little trailer that will allow me to pick up the things that we're gonna to need to be able to pick up for the homestead because it gets really expensive if you have to pay people who have pickup trucks to bring you stuff. Um, last year, I spent $300 on the load of mulch that we brought in. I needed it desperately at that time, and I didn't have any way to go get it that I felt safe doing. We did have an offer of a loan of a truck and trailer from a friend, but I was not comfortable driving on the roads yet. It was pretty scary for me to have even the thought of being on those roads with somebody else's vehicle and trailer. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with it now, though. I'm pretty. I go probably slower than I need to. Our van has been swallowed in a few of the potholes around here. So. Yeah, it has been. But but that's the thing that I need to probably focus on once we have some of the bigger purchases we need for the house, because uh, if you do use your family vehicle to carry things like manure and uh, lumber and things like that, you get critters like bugs in your car. Your car's always going to smell bad, and it tears up the upholstery. We've, we've done it a bit, we, but even when you lay tarps down, it just doesn't work very well. And um, I probably won't be doing any big projects until we find that. Um, but I think we'll have enough to show on the video with just planting the herbs, 
getting the horses out there, getting the rabbit cages hung up, getting the um, watering system. I'm going to be using the nipple system where you have the five gallon bucket that has the tubing coming off of it into each individual cage. So you just have to fill the five gallon bucket. So that's the watering system I'm going to be setting up. And I'll probably be doing some PVC water systems that are automatic to uh, water the garden so that John just has to lift one handle to get everything watered at the same time. And those are pretty much the, the only really projects I have in my mind at this point. Any other thoughts? Any other questions? No? Two weeks, 23 hours in camera. <laughs> two weeks, six oh. days and 23 hours. There we go. <laughs> Trucks are always helpful in the south because of the rainy, muddy season. Well, and we even had our inspector at the house get stuck because he drove off the road. You cannot, in in Oklahoma, if it's rained in the last week, you cannot drive off the road even just a couple inches because you will get stuck. That clay will suck you in. And uh, and a regular truck doesn't cut it. you got to have four-wheel drive if you're going to be playing in the mud. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Redeemed Ranch said a watering drip system on a timer. Yeah, and there is electricity out by some of the pumps uh, if we needed to set up uh, other other things, lights or greenhouses or things like that. It this ha this property, this house really does have a lot of really great bones to start with. But it is at a start. But it is, the, it is just a blank canvas, and the gray of the house drives me nuts. I look at it, and I think, oh, there's the cinder block on the hill. And that's literally what it looks like. The first thing I want to do is get some big red pots, put some poppies in them, and just have a big splash of red color on the front of the porch, just as some kind of welcoming as you drive up uh, so that it looks like a home. I'm not a huge fan of modular homes. I think they always look like <laughs> they don't look cottagey at all. But we really, really like the layout of the house on the inside. We are more than charmed by the way that they set the rooms up, the size of the kitchen, and the layout. So inside, I think we're going to be really, really happy with it. All right, Garvin Gardens. Question. Some of my plants are getting red stems when they die. Any ideas? I'm growing indoors. Red stems. I know that mine turn a little bit purple, and then I lose leaves, and that seems to be the water that the water um, has enough chemicals in it from being treated that it doesn't necessarily kill the whole plant, but there, it, it loses some leaves every time I water it. Hardmark says, don't they harvest heroin from poppies? Yes, yes. we're looking for multiple sources of income. Seriously. So. Um, I have never harvested uh, heroin from poppies, if that's the question. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> see, Mandela says our main goal is a modular home on a little under 10 acres. Nice. Who was it? Mandela. Okay. The, the, one of the other nice things about this property is that there's an additional five acres on the side that they were willing to sell only to the person who bought the house and the fi original five acres. It has an enormous shop on it. We don't really need an enormous shop. But um, they did tell us that we could lease the property if we weren't ready to buy it. And it has, if you got the, the best part up there, it's probably not the best part, but there's a lot of best parts, is the grass. They have the native grass up there. I think they call it blue stem. And it's beautiful when the wind comes up and you're looking at, at the grass as it waves. It just is blow your mind beautiful. And so um, if we were to lease that property, I would want to be very careful to do some research on how to preserve that grass so that I was letting it reseed instead of just cutting it down so much that it couldn't reseed because it is one of the best parts of the property. It's, it's just beautiful and amazing. Manuela says we could be neighbors. We could be neighbors. Except oh, is she saying it's for sale? No. What? Hmm. No, she's in Arkansas. Okay. But Very confused. She says we'd like to be neighbors. Oh, you'd like to be neighbors. And I said, yeah, we'd like to be neighbors too, except... I've realized I don't get along with any of my neighbors, and I get along with her. <laughs> so, no, we can't be neighbors. And, other, and we like you, and that's why. So, um, Let's see. You need to filter water if it keeps killing your plants. Okay, so we're still talking to Garvin Gardens. 
City Water. Who yeah. decided to sell it to Aardvark? What? Is He's somebody selling you heart heroin? <laughs> I mean, that's, I must have skipped a conversation the there. What are they selling you? What are they selling you? Poppies. Is it? Lots of poppies now, dear. I must have missed a conversation. I don't know. I'm trying not to engage with anything that Aardvark says because I get in trouble. Hey, Bumblebee Junction, how are you? Yeah, uh, Redeem Ranch said need to filter water if it keeps killing your plants. So our Berkey, we got a smaller Berkey when we moved here, and we're really grateful for it, but it barely keeps up with drinking water. And so I have to kind of sacrifice between drinking water and water for the plants. The plants are still growing and they're still healthy, but when I water, we do lose a couple leaves, and that makes me sad. I just don't know what to do about it. We do have the capacity to harvest rainwater, off of the roof once we get gutters in. That was one of the first things we wanted to do was get some rain gutters in. Um, and so because the water out there is treated as well, it would probably not be a bad idea for me to really look hard at getting up a water system. And also for the animals because the water out where we're going is very expensive. It's metered and very expensive. And so anything that I can harvest when it rains is go team, good idea. Um, if you've seen heirloom permaculture, they have a, a watering system set up, a water harvesting system that they have for their chickens. And I don't think they have a system set up. Did they have a big cistern? I don't know, I'm looking, I'm, I'm mapping out where Mandolin lives. She's not that oh, far. I was talking about heirloom permaculture. I know, she's not that far past our, uh, Fort Smith. Gotcha. So she's within a day's drive. Did she put her address on there? She put her town she was in. Oh, okay. I'm just, don't worry. All right. And John is definitely sensory and he says aardvark. It's John. You guys deserve each other. Not it is really. long as you're being mean to each other and not me. All right. So, no, Mandolin says, we won't bug you unless of an emergency. And I was like, oh, we're practically neighbors now. We can drive to each other within a day. So. <laughs> oh, that's a long drive. We used to drive so much more than we do now. Oh, thanks. I We started out, this is church attire. So this is pretty dress. We never quite graduated from church attire from today. It turned into a lot. I, I, I got to teach a lesson at church, and it was extremely stressful. Poor Paige also had to teach a lesson, and she cried. But not during the lesson, just before. Um, oh, I'm missing. Who said, who said hey from? Mary Kate's out for the night. What? Hello from Mississippi, homesteading Pioneer oh, Way. Hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Mandolin bread, Sarah Shouse. It's three hours, actually. She's three oh, hours away. Well, that's not too bad. See, we can make it there and back in a day. Honey, you can't be down here in your pajamas. Wrap up and stay over there, okay? All right. <sighs> yep, I think we're going to turn in. Oh, we've only been on like. Okay, well, I need to go supervise children, except. <laughs> Floors. Children. Uh huh. Okay, so it might be a couple days before I put up another video. I'm trying to kind of take a step back, take a deep breath after getting that one big homestead searching video done. Um, I do have some more videos hmm. with the horses to put up, but it may, it, I might just take a couple days off. Luna Bell Bunny says, Are you worried about the foxtails you found near the pond? Question. No, because what foxtails are is they are actually just the seed head on the grass. And so it's when the horses can't keep the, the grass trimmed down well enough and they and the grass goes to seed that they form those heads. And the only reason it was in the hay this much this year was because they had a really late harvest and they only got, I think they said they only got one cutting instead of getting two, they got one cutting so hay was scarce and it was poorer quality than usual because they had to wait so late in the season. Back home in Idaho, we get like a minimum of three cuttings even though our season is very, very short, we control when the water is applied and we can control pretty well when it dries. Well, and we use a different kind of hay too. And we use a different kind of hay. Much faster growing up there. Um, the alfalfa? It's it richer. It's fast. It's richer, but it do, I don't think it necessarily grows faster than grass. It just um, is richer. Because the grass. I don't know. I've seen some of our poor farmers up there harvesting it. They don't look very big. You're silly. I'm silly. So. Bumblebee says you aren't bouncing. Did you lose your sitting ball? 
Um, I haven't used it as much lately. Uh, the table that I have my computer set out up to is hard to get your legs under, and so I have a tendency to just use the bench. It's probably why my hips are sore. <laughs> it's because I need to get on back on it. Um, and so, will a grazing horse find the ones you found? No. What will happen is that the green grass will come up through the old grass. So when you have foxtail that's from like the brown mature grass, and so as long as it's been cut and it falls down, or from its own weight, it just falls down because it's been raining, the green grass grows up and through it, and they would prefer to eat the green grass rather than the brown grass so there won't be any foxtails in it. And um, be before they put the house on the market, they went down, they went and cut the grass. So, uh, one reason they do that here is to keep pests down. The other reason, I believe, is for fire uh, safety prevention. You don't want a lot of tall grass and dead things around your house because if there was a grass fire or something, it you don't want to have it to ha have access or fuel around your house. So they had gone and cut that. Um, the crazy horse find the ones you found. No, because it was cut and the grass has already started to grow back up. So everybody's saying thanks and good night. Okay. God bless and thanks All guys. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.